So now that we have an equation for the gravitational force, we can try to describe orbits. So let's imagine that we have a mass sitting in space. So this could be a planet. And we have another object orbiting this mass. And let's assume that the orbit follows uniform circular motion. So it's going to follow uniform circular motion. In this case, we're going to have a constant velocity, or a constant speed rather, that is tangent to the circle at all points. We're going to have a constant acceleration in magnitude, which is equal to the accel centripetal acceleration. And this is being provided by a centripetal force, which can only be the gravitational force in this case. So we can write an equation for the centripetal force, where the Fc is equal to the orbiting mass multiplied by the centripetal acceleration. And this is equal to the orbiting mass multiplied by its velocity squared divided by the radius of the orbit. And in this case, the radius is going to be the distance from the orbit to the center of the inner mass. And since we said that Fc in this case, or the centripetal acceleration, is equal to the force of gravity, we can say that Fg is equal to the orbiting mass multiplied by its velocity squared divided by the radius. We can rewrite this again to equal g times the inner mass times the orbiting mass divided by r squared being equal to the orbiting mass times its velocity squared divided by r. So then the orbiting mass will cancel from both sides. One of our radiuses is going to cancel. And we can isolate for our velocity where v is equal to the square root of gm of our inner mass divided by the radius of the orbit. So that's an expression for our orbital velocity. And you can notice that the orbital velocity does not, does not depend on the orbital mass, little m. So this is little m, this is big M. Little m does not matter. It could be a very large number, it could be a very small number. The velocity will stay the same. Now our second goal is to describe the time it takes to make one complete revolution or one complete orbit, which is one cycle. In other words, we want to find the period. So the period is equal to the time of one cycle, which can be the distance of the orbit divided by the velocity. Now the distance of the orbit is the circumference of the circle, which is 2 pi r, divided by the velocity, which, was, which we have an expression for. It's going to be gm divided by r radius. Now we can simplify this further, where everything can go under the square root. So g, so we're going to have 4 pi squared times r squared divided by gm over r. And then our r can go to the top, so we'll get a final expression where our orbital period is equal to 4 pi squared r cubed divided by g m all square rooted. So once again, the period also does not depend on the mass of the orbiting mass. Okay, so now we can do a question. We have two planets, both of mass little m which are orbiting two other planets of masses m and 3m respectively. So we have a mass of little m, which is being orbited by another mass of little m. And we have a mass of 3m, which is also being orbited by a mass of little m. And we're told that to assume that the orbits are the same size, so r is equal in both cases. So here we have an orbital radius of r, and here we have an orbital radius of r. We're asked to compare the orbital speed of the first planet to the orbital speed of the second planet. So if we have a v2 over here and a v1 over here, we want to compare the speeds. Well, we can create an expression for v1. v1 is equal to the square root of capital G times our inner mass, which is just m divided by the radius, which is r, and v2 is going to equal the square root of g times our inner mass, which is 3m, 
divided by our radius, again, is r. And we're asked to compare these orbital speeds. So we can do this by a ratio of v1 divided by v2. We can see how they compare. And this is going to equal the square root of g m over r divided by the square root of g 3m over r. We can make this one single square root of g m over r all divided by g 3m over r. So we have an m that cancels, we have a g that cancels, we have an r that cancels, and all we're left with is the square root of 1 over 3, or since the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 1 over 3. So our final observation is that root 3 times v1 is equal to v2, which means that v1 is smaller than v2, since something multiplied by v1 is equal to v2, which makes sense because v1 is orbiting a smaller mass, while v2 is orbiting a bigger mass at the same radius, and both of them have the same mass. Therefore, v2 has to be going at a bigger speed because the inner mass is greater. All right, question number two. So we have a planet that's orbiting 149.6 times 10 to the 9 meters from the sun, and its orbital period is 365.24 days. With this information, we're asked to find the mass of the sun. So we have our sun, and we have another planet that's orbiting around the sun. And it has an orbital radius of 149.6 times 10 to the 9 meters. And we're told that the time to complete one complete orbit, or the period, is 365.24 days. Well, I want to deal with SI units, so I'm going to convert this to seconds. So it's going to be 365.24 times 24 hours in a day, times 60 minutes in an hour, times 60 seconds in a minute. And that's going to give 3.1556 times 10 to the 7 seconds. And I'm asked to find the mass of the sun. Well, I can write my orbital equation for the period, uh, where the period is equal to the square root of 4 pi squared, r cubed, all divided by gm. And in this case, the inner mass, or capital M, is equal to the mass of the sun, which is what I'm trying to find, so I'll have to isolate. So I can square both sides. So the period squared is equal to 4 pi squared r cubed divided by g times the mass of the sun. Then I can easily isolate for the mass of the sun. m sun is equal to 4 pi squared r cubed divided by g times the period squared. And if I plug all of this in, m sun is equal to 4 pi squared my radius is 149.6 times 10 to the 9 meters cubed divided by my gravitational constant, which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 Newton meters squared by kilograms squared. And then my period is 3.1556 times 10 to the 7 seconds, and all of this is squared. And if we plug this into our calculator, we have an answer of 1.99 times 10 to the 34. And if we look at our units for a second, we have meters cubed on the top. On the bottom, we have Newton meters squared by kilograms squared multiplied by seconds squared. So we have meters squared down here, which will cancel with two of the meters at the top. Then our Newtons are equal to kilograms meters per second squared divided by kilograms squared. We have second squared down here, so this meters will cancel with that meters. This second squared will cancel with that second squared. One of these kilograms will cancel with one of these kilograms. This kilogram is on the bottom, so it's going to go back to the top, and we get a final answer in kilograms. Okay, and our final question. So we're asked to find the distance from Earth's surface where the orbital velocity is going to be 5,000 meters per second from Earth's surface. 
and we're told to assume that the Earth's mass is 5.98 times 10 to the 4, 24 kilograms, and that its radius is 6.378 times 10 to the 6 meters. So we're trying to find the orbital radius such that our velocity is 5,000 meters per second. And we're told to assume that the Earth's mass is 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, and that its radius is 6.378 times 10 to the 6 meters. So we have our planet, and we have another object orbiting our planet with a velocity of 5,000 meters per second, and we're trying to find this distance r. So we can write our equation for the velocity, where v is equal to the square root, capital G, times the inner mass divided by r. In this case, our inner mass is equal to the mass of the Earth, which is equal to what we have in our question. And we're trying to isolate for r. So we can square both sides. v squared is going to be equal to gm over r. And so the radius is equal to g times the mass of the Earth divided by the velocity squared. And if we plug this in, we'll get 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 Newton meters squared by kilograms squared. The mass of the Earth, which is 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, all divided by our velocity squared, which we want to be 5,000 meters per second squared. And if we look at our units really quick, we have Newton meters squared by kilograms squared multiplied by kilograms divided by meters squared per second squared. So we have these meters squared canceling with these meters squared, one of these kilograms canceling with one of these kilograms. We're left with Newtons, which is a kilogram meter per second squared divided by kilograms all divided by 1 over second squared. So these second squared on the denominator will go to the top. We'll cancel with these second squared. These two kilograms will cancel. And we're left with the final answer in meters. If you plug it into your calculator, you'll get an answer of 1.595 times 10 to the 7 meters. But we found the radius of the orbit. We're trying to find the radius away from Earth's surface, or the altitude. So we'll call that RA. In this case, RA is going to equal our radius of the orbit, which we just found, minus the radius of the Earth. So that's going to be 1.595 times 10 to the 7 meters minus 6.378 times 10 to the 6 meters. If you plug that into your calculator, you'll get a final answer of 9.58 times 10 to the 6 meters. And that is the distance away from Earth's surface where the orbit velocity is 5,000 meters per second.